Hello students, in the previous video we have studied how charging happens at an atomic level. In this video what we want to see is how bodies can be charged practically. That means we want to see the various methods of charging. And the first method that we have is called as charging by friction. Let us do a very interesting activity and try to understand this method of charging. For this activity, I am going to take a glass rod and a piece of silk cloth. Now I told you that this method of charging is called as charging by friction. And when does friction arise? When we rub two bodies together. So I am going to take this glass rod and rub it with the silk cloth. As soon as I do this, something very interesting happens. The glass rod becomes positively charged and the silk cloth becomes negatively charged. Isn't that fascinating? But why did this happen? Why didn't these two bodies become charged? Let's try to understand that in more detail. This happens because when a neutral glass rod is rubbed with neutral silk cloth, the energy spent in rubbing is utilized to remove the outermost electron from the atoms. The glass rod loses electrons while rubbing and due to deficiency of electrons, the atoms of the glass rod develop positive charge. These electrons are gained by the atoms in the silk cloth and due to excess of electrons in the atoms of the silk cloth, the silk cloth develops negative charge. We can do one more similar activity with a plastic pipe and a woolen cloth for which I am using my own woolen glove. Now when we rub them together, we will find that the plastic pipe becomes negatively charged and the woolen glove becomes positively charged. This is exactly opposite of what happened with the glass rod and the silk cloth. Can you think about why did this happen? This happened because in this case, when we rub them together, the electrons get transferred from the glove to the plastic pipe. Whereas in the glass rod case, electrons were transferred from the glass rod to the silk cloth. The second method of charging is called as charging by conduction. And conduction is any process where there is a movement or flow of charges in a suitable medium like a metal or an alloy. Using this method, what we can do is, we can charge a neutral body by using another already charged body. And how does this work? Let's try to see once again by looking at a very interesting activity. For this activity, I'm going to take a neutral metallic sphere. I hope you remember that even a neutral body has both positive as well as negative charges, but always in equal number as you can see here. Because of this, the net charge on a neutral body is zero. But what if I want to make it net positively charged? What should I do? So what we can do is we can take a positively charged body like this positively charged rod and bring it in contact with this sphere. What will happen due to this? We know that the positive charges cannot move. But the only charges which can move are the negative charges or the electrons present in the bodies. So as soon as we bring the rod in contact with the sphere, the large amount of positive charge will start attracting the electrons, the negative charge of the sphere towards it. And slowly the electrons will start flowing into the rod. After some of the electrons have moved from the sphere into the rod, we'll see that the process of conduction stops. And now we can remove the rod. It does not have any more role. Now if we observe the metallic sphere, what do we see? We can clearly see that there are more number of positive charges and lesser number of negative charges. Or we can say that there is an excess of positive charge or a deficiency of negative charges. Thus making this body net positively charged. 
Similarly, if we want to make the metallic sphere net negatively charged, then once again we can take the neutral sphere, bring a negatively charged rod in contact with this sphere. Now what will we see? We'll see that the negative charges or the electrons from the rod will now start flowing into the sphere. And after a point, the process of conduction will stop and we can remove the rod. We can clearly see that now the sphere has more number of negative charges and lesser number of positive charges. It has an excess of electrons because of which now we have the sphere net negatively charged. The third method of charging that we want to study is called as charging by induction. And for this, once again, I'm going to take the neutral metallic sphere, which we know has equal number of positive and negative charges. Now, I'm going to take a positively charged rod and bring it very close to the sphere. Mind it, I'm only bringing it very close to the sphere, but not making contact. Now, what will happen? Since there is no contact, there can't be conduction, there can't be flow of charges. But because of this positively charged rod, the negative charges of the sphere will get attracted and will get accumulated on this side, my right hand side. Whereas the positive charges will get repelled by this rod and they will get accumulated on this side, my left hand side. This process of the separation of charges is what we call as the process of induction. And the charges which are appearing on both the sides, they are called as the induced charges. One very important thing that you must note here is that the sphere is still not having any net charge. We have simply separated the positive and negative charges using the process of induction. There are still equal number of positive and negative charges, so the net charge is zero. And this is a characteristic of the process of induction. It only helps us in redistributing the charges. It never provides a net charge to the body. But if I want to give a net charge to this body, then what should I do? Let us try to understand this further and see how we can give this body a net charge. For this, we need to connect the metallic sphere to the earth using a metallic wire. This process is called as earthing or grounding of objects. As soon as we connect the metallic sphere to the earth, we'll see that the electrons or negative charges start flowing from earth towards the sphere and neutralize the positive charge on this side. Once the flow of negative charges from earth towards the sphere has stopped, we can remove this connection with the earth. And now there is no use of this positively charged rod also. As soon as we do this, the negative charges which are remaining on the sphere will distribute themselves uniformly. And this is how using induction, we have generated a negatively charged body. Similarly, if we want to give a net positive charge to the sphere, then once again, we'll begin with the neutral metallic sphere and now take a negatively charged rod very close to it. Connect the sphere to the earth so that the excess negative charges on this side flow into the earth. Once the flow has stopped, we can remove this wire connecting the sphere to the earth and also remove this rod from the setup. Now, you can clearly see what we have is a positively charged sphere having uniform charge distribution on its surface. In this manner, by using induction, we have given a net positive charge to this sphere. This was the last method which I wanted to take and I hope that all the methods of charging were clear to you.